We finished watching Whistleblower. I don't know if we should get any of your reactions now or save them for the end. Definitely just feel a bit more relieved than <laughs> Outlast. You're a little happier. <laughs> mm-hmm. Should we do out-of-context summary points? Let's do it. It was hard to choose this time. There was a lot of good options, but here are the ones that I decided on. Someone tries to steal Wayland's pee-pee. We narrowly avoid an arranged marriage. And it turns out we're not the only ones concerned over Traeger's lack of pants. Waylon, seemingly unscathed from his fall through a roof, continues to fight for a way out of Mount Massive. Unfortunately, he lands right into Gluskin's lair. So, he wakes up, well, he gets up from the fall, and he's now in, like, some attic-type area. And we start hearing these creepy voices, and they're saying some uncomfortable things. I mean, we can name a few of them. Grow some hair on them. A gift for the groom. And then I think my personal favorite. Go find yourself a possum titty. I'm sorry, what? I think that might be my new insult when I just want someone to leave me alone. And the way the voices sound like, it sounds like a conversation. So you're wondering, is there more than one person? Or is it just one person talking back and forth and using different voices? Who's there? I, we will get an answer to that, but before we get there, I realized when we were watching the main game, you can hear one of these voices in the background. Oh. So I need <laughs> to show you. I have a clip okay. to compare. So the first one I'm going to share with you is from the main game. It's going to be hard to hear because it's in the background. Okay. I'll play it a couple times. All right, here we go. Because you kind of hear it at the end there. You can kind of hear the voice though, right? It's like a female like get slashed. I can't make out well, the Well then words. compare it to this one from Whistleblower. Don't need any sisters. Maybe some, some girls that need blood. When I was listening, I was like, that's the same voice. When we're playing as Miles, I think this person is somewhere else in the building. And I think oh. we might see how they got to there <laughs> through mm -hmm. the course of uh, the rest of this game. But the mm -hmm. the sound clip that I was showing you was in part one mm -hmm. from the gameplay at 3113. Mm -hmm. These people also mention Gluskin. It sounds like they want to offer someone up to him. Um, so I'm guessing that's probably Waylon. And that makes you wonder why... Why are mm -hmm. we offering people up to Gluskin? So Waylon continues to walk through this attic, and then we're surprised by a variant who rather loudly yells, quiet. I feel like him yelling quiet was much louder than anything Waylon was doing. But anyway, he tells him that if they catch us, they'll give us to him. But continuing on, we find the first document for this piece of gameplay. And it's an email from the KFC, Neil. And it's titled Dissociative Dennis, who is a patient who has four personalities who are somehow concerned about a flood. But I think this answers your question. I think that these voices we're hearing are all the same person, but four different mm -hmm. personalities. Um, I don't know if you had any notes on Doc 1. Nope. Waylon is then chased from the attic and ends up running into a um, highly questionable area, which includes a mutilated body that has had some Additional choice body parts sewn onto it. But uh, that's not the worst part. I think we can agree on what the worst part of this is, right? The head. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And the fact that it's gross enough that we had to blur it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I might increase the blurring a little bit after watching it on the big screen. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is clearly symbolizing birth, right? Definitely. And... When we go back to themes of this area, you keep hearing things about for the groom. In a normal situation, when you have bride and groom, I think having kids later than the road, it's very normal. But the way they're doing it, it's a bit too forceful. <laughs> That's very tame word for what the situation yeah, is. Forceful, yeah, putting it lightly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I think Waylon is just as caught off guard as we were because he makes a note after saying this. And one of the things he says is, 
This is the kind of thing a man cannot see without changing in some irreparable way. <laughs> Valid. But also he says money, profit, things we ju- we made just because we could. Is he talking about Gluskin or Murkoff? I think he's talking about Murkoff the entire situation. Because it's not just about the situation that he's seen. It's about the entire thing of just profiting off of these people. And then we also know that from other confidential documents that they've gone through a lot of things about oh let's get some more females in here to to get some more pregnancies and let's earn some more money off of that so i think it's really about murkoff or Waylon. he's gonna have so much ptsd especially when it comes to labor and and having kids and everything oh i think he already has kids so thank god hopefully that chapter's over for him <laughs> he made it through already <laughs> yes <laughs> grandkids might be a different story though well then one of my all-time favorite character introductions. I mean, you could argue we saw him earlier, but I think he's a changed man now. So I'm counting this as, a, as an introduction for him. It's Gluskin. And he just pops up in a window and says, God! And it's no. fantastic. I love it so much. I think it's hilarious and it's terrifying. And at some point he says, let me fill you up. Like, what? Oh, Yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of issues with a lot of what he says. You could make me whole. I could feel that emptiness inside you. I want you to have fun with me. Smell of my love's arbor. Silky smooth, like a little girl again. Cut away everything vulgar. Which is why I like to call him Get Away From Me Gluskin. And he proceeds to hunt down Waylon, and it's clear that he's quite smitten with him. Like you were saying, it sounds like he wants to do some things, too, with him. Definitely wants to marry him, or anyone else he can catch, for that matter. This guy is... It's like a cat and mouse game for him, too. Mm -hmm. Because you know from all the environment and everything, Waylon is not going to be the first person he's killed or tried to do this to him. It's just the newest toy. And so it's pretty disgusting and disturbing. And there's also a wedding dress. If he gets his hands on Waylon, we all know what he's going to be dressed as. Oh, yeah. I mean, it. <laughs> this is maybe one of the most intense uh, characters, intense. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Know, chapters of a game that I've ever played. And the, the music, fact that this too. Is a DLC. Oh, yeah. The music is frightening. I'm wondering because he does say something that indicates he recognizes Waylon from the opening moments of this game. And he's referencing when he like runs up to the glass when Waylon is fixing the computer. And do you think this is why he seems so extremely obsessed with him? Or do you think he has this level of intensity? I feel like it probably is more with Waylon. But I also think it's probably because when he first saw Waylon, Waylon would have been his only way out. And now he knows that he's not going to be able to leave. So he's going to try to keep Waylon with him. His one person from his, how should I say? I think when he was still normal, Waylon was the only one who was normal with him. Mm-hmm. So now that he knows he's changed, he wants to keep Waylon from, as a token of his past life. He definitely has honed in on him from that interaction and i think you're right i think it's because that's just something that was in his brain before it went so mushy but so waylon runs away he jumps into an elevator shaft trying to land on a ladder which unfortunately breaks and glustin gets pretty butthurt when this happens and he says you would rather die than be with me i feel like that's an easy yes Mm -hmm. especially knowing what's about to happen well, the chase is still on until Waylon is cornered in a locker and Gluskin snatches him and hauls him down to his office, lair, workroom. Before we continue on down that scene, can we pause and just appreciate how he closes doors compared to Miles? He slowly, oh softly God, yes. closes the doors <laughs> compared to Miles yeah. just slamming. <laughs> Finally, they fixed it. For that, Waylon deserves to make it out of here. <laughs> Just for that. Yes. Gluskin is dragging Waylon down, and it sounds like he is having some issues. He kind of like self-admits some 
some daddy issues maybe i don't know if you picked up on that Mm -hmm. i think it's not just daddy issues it's like being a man issue yeah it's like like his dad is the root cause Mm -hmm. masculinity problems gluskin gasses waylon and then 12 hours go by so you have to wonder where's miles at this point while in and out of sleep waylon witnesses some failed surgery attempts and this is when you see oh, just how brutal Gluskin is. He's um he's 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 chopping stuff off and then trying to add some new stuff, but when he fails and one dies, he just like is like, oh well, on to the next one pretty much, and shoves this poor variant off the table. He's almost I don't know if he's worse than Trigger or if Trigger's worse than him. I just, I can't tell which one I would prefer to be stuck with if I had to choose between the two of them. You know, it's <laughs> it's an excellent question. At least Gluskin is wearing a suit. He's the, he's the best dressed patient we've seen the whole game. <laughs> and Traeger has no pants. So that's a <laughs> strike one against Traeger. Um, I guess it depends on what part you want cut off for his fingers or your dick. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> well i mean since we don't have one i'm gonna go with um we want to keep our fingers first for longer mm-hmm. right <laughs> yes <laughs> um okay moving on from that waylon is now on the chopping block quite literally but some guy some amazing guy attacks gluskin and waylon's able to escape fully intact and is what we witness in this moment why we see so many variants running around with no pee-pee. Mm-hmm. It has to be. Right. It has to be. So that means that some of them got away? Or do you think it's some results of the morphogenic engine and some cell regeneration gone wrong? It's hard to say because there's so many of them. And it seems like the difference is, like, <laughs> can't believe we're talking about this, but the ones with no pee-pee <laughs> have, like, the, uh, the crazy-looking skin. But then, like, the Mm. SDWDOs, their skin is more normal. So, like, is it just that they are farther down in the the treatment and that's a a side effect? Or were they just people who were captured by Gluskin and as a result of whatever torture he puts them through, that's what they end up looking like and they're just somehow the lucky few that are able to escape? You have Miles writing something about saying that Maybe I was wrong. Telling the world would only draw it here. Should this place just die faster and fester here? I won't tell the world if I mean spreading the infection. Let it die alone. Let it rot. It's ironic because he started this entire thing where he messaged Miles and yet he's going far enough in saying that, oh crap, I think I made a mistake. I get his point. No one should be in contact with this. Mm -hmm. But there's also... How do you know it's not going to spread on its own? We already have that theory. And of course, he doesn't know about this, but that theory that the treatment's leaking and that's what the helicopters and the pesticide is trying to control. Mm -hmm. I think that there's no way to control this. And so I think exposing it is the best chance. It's not over yet. Gluskin is very determined to make Waylon his bride. And uh, the only escape is out a window. If he wasn't afraid of heights before, he is now because he's jumped off of some high places. Although he seems relatively unharmed each time, so maybe not. But he is able to keep going and quickly finds a document. And this is a patient status report for Gluskin. And we learn some more about him. It also sounds like there it's not just his dad and maybe his uncle maybe was abusive to him. He's been through something, and maybe that's Mm -hmm. why he was targeted to be a patient in the first place. Right, the horror, and that's why he was one of them in the uh, the fishbowl things at the start of the game. But it also sounds like he's maybe a serial killer. They say that he refuses to discuss his victims. When I showed him pictures of the women, Mm -hmm. he would not admit that they were dead or mutilated. And this kind of goes back to your question that you had earlier. Does he not want to admit that they're dead or mutilated because he wants them to be alive, to be his brides? And this is something I wrote in my notebook when I played, so I'm glad I went back and read all my notes. They're, all the women are gone. 
So he can't kill any women. So do you think that his goal with creating women out of these poor variants is to marry them or just to kill them? I feel like both to marry them and then kill them or maybe the other way around. But it also seems like not admitting that they're dead might be a way for him to cope seeing that he didn't do anything wrong since if I don't think they're dead then that means I didn't kill them and therefore I'm not in the wrong and maybe Mm -hmm. that's why he's a serial killer because he never considers himself a murderer to begin with Mm -hmm. he seems like a very a very deep character surprisingly so and it really is because you can understand where he's coming from doesn't mean it's right Mm -hmm. but you understand why he is the person he is Right. You can see why he got messed up. Can you say poor Gluskin? I mean, he's a bit beyond being able to redeem himself. Yeah. He still made his choices. Moving on, an injured Wayland makes his way into another building, which unfortunately turns out to be another part of Gluskin's domain. So, I don't know what kind of PE class that is. I'm glad we never experienced anything like that when we were in school. Oh my gosh, can you imagine the PTA members and all the parents going crazy? It's rope climbing gone wrong. So, I mean, like, who's helping him hang all these people? Do you think that Eddie is killing all these people and each person he's somehow created a pulley system that he's pulling them up? I do. And I think we'll see that pulley system in action. (laughs) Yes. Can we say he is very organized? It's not, I mean, it's gross. But he's organized, so at least he's got that going Mm -hmm. for him. So this is when actually seeing all these bodies hanging in the gym is when Waylon makes another note that he sort of asked the same question that I had in my notes, which is whatever story he's telling himself, he's not making women to bear his children. He's making women to kill them. I do think he's a serial killer that kills women. And I thought he was more obsessed with marriage, but maybe it is having children and if so why i feel like there's not much said about his mom and so maybe he when his dad kills his mom or something but i have a feeling that his mom has to be involved in this kind of situation and mm-hmm. part of where his ptsd stems from is seeing something it seems like he likes his mother like he'll sing songs about her and say like oh I need to find a woman as good as the one that dad found, which is a little creepy way to put it. Maybe it's not that he liked his mom. He liked what he thought his mom was. Yeah. Maybe it's it's like him imagining something being very perfect because the reality of it is not. Yeah. Maybe he's trying to recreate his childhood, but in a what it should have been instead of what it turned out to be. I'm confused. Did Gluskin find a bride? Who is this person, this thing, holding the key? It's wearing a wedding dress. It's set up as a ceremony like he's about to marry this thing. Why is that there if Waylon's supposed to be his bride? You know what I'm saying? Is it just a placeholder? So he can look at it and be like, soon there'll be a real person there. No, I think that person just died in that situation. Was it a person? Is it a mannequin? I couldn't tell. I thought it was a person. Well, I also, I had my hand covering my face and just looking through the cracks of my finger most of this latter half of the game, so... Fair. I wouldn't trust my word. I feel like I need to look real quick. I don't know if it I makes a difference. A I thought it was a dude in a dress. That would be the, the assumption. It looks pretty real. It looks pretty, pretty bloody. But in any case, I think it's dead. <laughs> It's no longer living. It's holding a key, which, uh, hey, yay, we have a key. Gluskin shows up again, and Waylon does get grabbed, and Gluskin is over it. He's tired of it. He's at his wit's end. So he decides to add Waylon to his collection of hanging mutilated bodies. After, by the way, he punched the absolute soul out of Waylon. Right? It must be like some enhanced strength that he has. So he's trying to string him up using that uh, pulley system (laughs) that you referenced. But things do not go according to plan. And Waylon is able to wiggle enough to cause a chain reaction that ends with Gluskin getting impaled. Holy cow. (laughs) That was such an intense scene. The music, how it just like crescendos and and gets louder. And and it's so intense because you're wondering, is this it for Waylon? 
Mm-hmm. This is this is the end of the game because you know Miles died, and it wouldn't be any surprise if Waylon dies. Does Waylon think it's funny? He takes a note <laughs> after seeing Gluskin's body. I'm trying to not laugh. Everyone who comes out, there's no way they come out still bright and cheery mm-hmm. and a positive outlook on life. They come in dark. They come out with some scars and everything. And I think this is just one instance where when you see death that frequently, he probably doesn't make much of it anymore. And that's why he's a bit... He, you can justify why it's okay for Wayland to be laughing at the death of mm-hmm. Eddie. And also, I mean, that man would try to murder him, so... I agree with you. I think my question, though, is what what's funny about it? Is it the irony? He's in disbelief, and it's funny because that could have been him, but it's not. The way Eddie tried to kill Waylon is the way that he dies. So mm-hmm. I think that's what's funny, because it's ironic for Waylon to witness. It could have been him, but it's not. Right. But then also in that, at the start of the game, that exchange, he says, like, you have to help me. I know you can or something along those lines. And then he ends up being the person who kills him, which is also kind of funny, I guess. So maybe he's laughing at that, too. I think it's time to say so long to Gluskin. Mm-hmm. I can start. I have three main points why I think he's a mother <laughs> One, did he not think that people would try to escape him for a reason? Like, does he not do some self-reflections like, oh, everyone tries to keep running away from me. Maybe I'm the problem. (laughs) Him just continuing to do more wrongful things and everything is an issue. Second point, did he not stop to think why people keep dying when he's just cutting off their private parts and everything? When he kills someone and just dumps them on the ground, like, oh, next one, you're up. And just goes Mm -hmm. ahead and does the same thing. He's very disconnected. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of humanity left. Mm-hmm. And the third thing is that there really is no valid reason for him to be killing so many people. He's just a serial killer who's not ready to admit that he is one. So I think for those three reasons, I'm going to say he's a uh, so long mother Yeah, it's pretty obviously a mother We don't even have to go that deep for this one. Mm-hmm. There's really no <laughs> contradictory information that says he wouldn't be a mother But let me just list off some of the highlights here. He might be a serial killer. He's very misogynistic. He's killed about five PE classes worth of people and mutilated countless others. So I marked him as a deeply disturbed mother. Totally agree. We didn't know him long, thankfully. So long, mother. Better or worse than Father Martin? Oh, he's definitely ten times worse than Father Martin. (laughs) Father Martin is not looking so bad anymore, is he? <laughs> He's actually looking a lot better. <laughs> um, speaking of Father Martin, after Waylon gets away from this Gluskin situation, he sees a burning church in the distance. Do you think that this is on fire because of Father Martin lighting himself on fire? I was thinking it's either because of that or maybe going back to the notes seeing how someone should just light this place on fire and just prevent more people coming in do you think when his email that he sent out maybe another person came in and decided to do what he wanted to do which was just burn down the place to prevent people from coming in it's certainly possible because Waylon says that he sent it out to multiple people Mm -hmm. so it is certainly possible but i feel like just the fact that it's the church that's on fire Mm -hmm. that makes me think it's the fire that father martin started Mm -hmm. which is kind of cool in a way because even though Father Martin was pretty screwed up, does he in some way, like if this fire keeps going, does he help the situation a little bit? I think so. But I also at the same time, depending how much the FBI needs for evidence to really punish those that were involved with it, then maybe Mm -hmm. it's not helping them out. But at the same time, if the FBI, considering the amount of documents they're forging, the FBI would have never caught on. So it's kind of like useless to collect evidence now. How ironic would it be if the the fire Father Martin starts spreads so far that it destroys Miles' camera with all the (laughs) evidence he wanted him to witness? (laughs) I guess he really didn't think the fire part through. Because he wants people to witness what's going on, but then he sort of goes and destroys it. 
with Gluskin out of the way, Wayland might have a chance to at least get close to the exit. And along the way, we start to see, I'm going to call them agents, tactical people. We'll call them agents. Um, mm-hmm. And he sees some of them looking at Traeger's body. And it's pretty clear that they've been kept in the dark about what's happening here. They're immediately taking Traeger's side and they're like, they even took his pants. <laughs> um, which we know is not what happened. It seems like he very, on his own volition, took off his pants. I was also curious, maybe that when the agents come in and everything, they're not the first group of people that came in to help them. Maybe that there's like the second or third round of people who've come in but just were never able to leave and died and... I'm thinking that everyone who went in probably went in and saw some evil people like Traeger died and they were like, oh, this poor person when in fact they weren't. And that's probably how they end up getting captured and everything. But you also um, gave me a thought like this, seeing their perspective sort of solidifies the point that we were making, like when Chris Walker died and we didn't feel comfortable just straight up calling him a mother (laughs) because of what he's been through. These people walking into this situation and seeing Traeger there immediately assume that he's the victim. But in reality, he was torturing people. And so then that goes back into what happened to him to turn him that way. Like everyone in this building could be a victim and an instigator. Okay, so Waylon finds a document. Helen is at it again. I think Helen might be one of the main villains in this game. They're trying to muscle Wernicke out and... Sounds like kill him, too, right? You're going to murder him? Documented murder. She then talks about three lucid dreamers, that it sounds like there's some discoveries with these people that could lend probably a lot of money. And they list out the patient numbers, but I was not able to find patient numbers anywhere. I don't know if you had any luck figuring out who these people are. Mm Mm-mm. Well, they're building a new facility to test out some new new stuff with these three patients. Helen is wanting to be involved, and she's basically saying, hopefully, the building will be safe enough for female staff to come back. She wants to be able to see with her own eyes that female employees or patients will get pregnant out of the blue. But I'm also thinking, wouldn't it be ironic if she was the one who got pregnant by visiting this team because she wanted to have female patients there? Yeah. I hope that a lot of these people get that sort of irony, that justice. Um, Yeah. She deserves it. I don't like her. Me neither. But yeah, they're building a new facility. So do they even care about Mount Massive anymore? Is this just Warnicky's project and do you think they had any hand in sort of instigating some of this downfall i think it's all just indirect consequences of things like we don't know exactly the source of what starts what what Mm -hmm. every action that they have is there's a ripple effect and the crazy thing is i guess we don't know when this document was created but all of this stuff is happening and has been happening and they're gonna start it again somewhere else so while Waylon is still trying to avoid the tactical team, we overhear one of them say, So are they being attacked by Wall Rider Miles right now? Are we sure the Wall Rider is Miles right now? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on to that one. <laughs> Step one. <laughs> timeline right like do we think mm-hmm. that these people calling for help is this the ending of the first game when the wall rider miles whatever you want to call it attacks the tactical team do you think that's what's happening right here i i don't know i'm not confident i i feel like we don't get enough information if the church fire really was father martin then we know it's closer to the end so i think that it is him so i think that the fire is father martin and that this is either. I think this is probably Miles attacking. Just based off of what we see at the ending of the first game, we know that tactical team is attacked. And so then my follow-up question, if that's true, is to these agents who are getting this message now that Waylon is looking at, do they leave to go help the people in the basement? And that clears the way for Waylon to escape. So in a way, does Miles help Waylon get to the exit? I mean, 
Wheeling was pretty darn close to the exit anyways, and I feel like whether or not the tactical team was there, I think Waylon would have been able to leave. Because we hear one of them say, shoot anything that moves. And I feel oh, like okay. that these agents would have seen him if they hadn't run to go help. I think it's connected. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll tell you why moving forward. So we find one last document, and it's transfer authorization for those same three patients mentioned in the last document. And it sounds like those fishbowls are hyperbaric chambers. And I feel like that's something that we should have been able to figure out, Cappy. <laughs> uh, you're talking to someone who's not very bright when it comes to this game because I'm paralyzed in fear from watching this. <laughs> We've been calling them pods, fishbowls. Yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like we could have figured this one out. But <laughs> anyway, and later in this document, they say, like, they're physically blind but not unseeing. What Do you have any mean? thoughts on what that means? My only guess is that they're seeing in their dreams, but they're, the reality is they're blind. Mm-hmm. So they're seeing with their mind's eye or something. I don't really understand. Yeah. Well, and they call them lucid dreamers. So are they in a permanent dream state? So like their eyes don't function anymore, but they still are able to lucid dream in sort of like a, like a dream walking way. How else can you see when your body isn't able to help you see? Right. We do get to the exit, but someone's there to greet us. Blair, what a turd. He doesn't want to let any information out, and he stabs Waylon in the gut. I Yeah, I was so mad. Why? You (laughs) just, like, want to start swearing at him. Like, how dare you stab Waylon after everything this man has gone through? But then the wall rider swoops in, saves the day, it kills Blair. And this is why, um, going back to our last topic, why I mm-hmm. think that it is Miles slash Wallrider in the basement that mm-hmm. sort of leads these agents away, even if it's not purposefully to lead them away. It's still a reaction of what he does. And so mm-hmm. I think the wall rider saves Waylon and kills Blair. So does this mean that Miles does have some control over the wall rider? Because... Is he, by killing Blair, allowing Waylon to expose the truth by getting out of here alive? Because why wouldn't he kill Waylon, too? That makes a really good point. Because Miles slash the wall rider is able to tell that Waylon is a civilian and not a doctor, not a patient in anything. So I think he is trying to let Waylon do the thing that he wasn't able to do. Yeah, that's what I think, too. And I think that this helps answer one of our burning questions, which was like the wall rider host relationship. How Mm -hmm. does that work? And there still might be a spectrum of like maybe Miles was just such a perfect host that he's able to have some control over the wall rider. Mm -hmm. But it seems like this is something that Miles would want and something that Miles would do. Save Waylon, let him get out, expose the truth. Mm -hmm. So is that where we're leaning right now that Miles has at least some Mm -hmm. control? I mean, it has to. Otherwise, Waylon would have died. Right. Well, I think we're on deck for another so long, Jeremy Blair. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't don't have a lot to say about this guy either. Uh, He's a textbook mother... I mean, what can I even say? He wants money, and he's fine covering up torture, and far worse to get it. Plus, he's a golfing buddy of Traeger's. I agree with you. He tried to kill Waylon. He did so many illegal things, literally has no ethics. It's karma waiting for it to happen. So I'm glad Miles was the one who was able to to do that. It's it's almost a bit of like a full circle moment too. Mm-hmm. A little bit of like um, closure, maybe even redemption. Does mm-hmm. it make you feel better about the ending of the main game? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what would have been perfect is if Miles and Waylon could both get there or get yeah. out of there. This is the second best option, considering how Miles is dead. Anything else to say about Blair? She would just say so long to that mother... Yeah, so long mother... Doesn't deserve any more airtime. He doesn't. I'm really glad he got exploded. But yeah, Waylon gets into Miles' car, and he films the wall rider slash Miles before driving away. At that very last moment, when Waylon's backing out in the jeep, we see like a swarm of black mass there and then we see like a shadow of a man i don't know Mm -hmm. if i'm imagining things 
Do you think that shadow of a man is Miles? I do. And here is where it gets interesting. I'm glad you brought this up. Because in the main game, every time that Miles films the wall rider, it's this weird looking thing, like no skin. Like it doesn't look perfectly human, right? Mm-hmm. It's like a weird looking thing. <laughs> but in this scene, when Waylon is filming it, it's a normal person, fully clothed. So is that Miles? I think yes. And I think whatever had control mm-hmm. of the wall rider before, was it the artificial AI? And that's why it looks weird. Was it Billy? Like, if it was Billy, why wouldn't it look like a human, like Miles? I guess the next question then is, do you think that Miles is purposely staying back and staying there because he knows the damage the wall rider can? And do you think he knows that he can't go with him and it's for the greater good for him to stay back? Um, Good question. And I feel like I need to ask myself some questions before I get to your question. (laughs) Part one. Is he, because he's not attacking him, right? He's Mm -hmm. just like slowly walking towards him. So is he just trying to herd him out? Hurry up, get out of here, go tell the truth. Or is he like, hey, wait up, buddy. Let me in the car. Let's get out of here together. You know, like, is he aware fully that he is the wall raider? Or does he still have enough of miles to be like, take me with you? Or is he, like you said, is he tethered to Mount Massive in some way? If he goes too far away, like what happens? So I don't. I guess the answer to your question is, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's so many different theories that we can have right now. Mm-hmm. Because he's walking and like almost limping, like he's like he's fighting it. Because when the wall rider attacks mm-hmm. Blair, it's like we've seen the wall rider through the main game, incredibly mm-hmm. powerful. Nothing's holding it back. But when Waylon is filming Miles as the wall rider, it's like he's walking against wind. And so that's what makes mm-hmm. me think: is he trying to? get out of here still i don't know (laughs) but it's different than any time we've seen Mm -hmm. the wall rider how did you like it did this answer some questions for you are you feeling better about this series as a whole yes i'm actually feeling even more satisfied with this ending knowing that that was miles and i'm glad that waylon was able to make it home because i would be really mad if someone else died too is there anything else to say about part two that was it for me I don't even think we need to do a summary. I feel like all the Mm -hmm. questions we had either are still questions or we sort of discussed them already. I feel like we've left and summarized it in in a place where we're comfortable with what we have. Yeah, I think we we know what we're going to know for now. So I think that's the end of Outlast Whistleblower, the end of Scary Christmas. And we're going to have one more episode left this season. We're excited for it. Hopefully we're not hyping it up too much, but we'll see you then. Anything you want to say before you count us off? Happy holidays. (laughs) There it is. We got one. We got one in there. I don't think we've said that at all yet. Nope. On one voice recorder. Three, two, one.